Pensacola, Florida. God is good. I'm excited tonight to introduce our, our he, he's not a guest in the house, but he's a guest speaker tonight. Uh, but he doesn't really need an introduction. But, but let me just say this about my brother Rudy Waters. The, woo! the kingdom just flows like water through him, man. He's, he's on the move, man. If you've ever, you know, uh, seen a, a, a rushing river, um, you know, you don't always know how swift the current is just by looking at the surface. All right, let me just go and tell you. But I, I grew up in an area, you ever heard of the Swanee River? Way down upon this one. Okay. All right, right now it's kind of low, but there's times when the Swanee River is flowing deep, deep, and fast. And you look at it and you think, oh, I can get across the other side. But you start paddling, you start trying to swim across. The current is so strong. What's going on underneath, it'll literally carry you down the river. You, you, it's so powerful. I'm telling you, that's the kingdom of God inside of you, brother. It is so strong and powerful flowing through you. And we are honored to have you and what's flowing in you and through your life and your family. Why don't y'all give Rudy a big hand as he comes up this evening. Rudy, Rudy, Rudy. <laughs> I, I want to do that too so bad. You're amazing, man. This is fam. Oh, man, I love you, brother. Let's go. I just want to thank really my leaders, my pastors for letting me do this. You know, you guys are family. I go out on the road a lot, and it's easier to preach on the road because they don't know me too well. Y'all you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So this is, this is uh, interesting tonight. I've got, um, I'm going to introduce... Pastor, me and Pastor Tony prayed and came up with a name for the outreach team called Freedom in Action. I love it. Yeah. Immediately when he said it, it was just, wow, it was amazing. And so um, I did talk to a few people to share a couple testimonies. Um, Dennis, you want to come first? Well, now you get to get over, get it over with. Awesome. Yeah. Well, uh, excuse me if I'm nervous. I'm not used to speaking in front of people, but uh, this is where we went to Tuscaloosa. It was Bobby and the three of us went, and we were in unity, and we were going to Pastor Ab's uh, sister's house, and we're on the way, and we had to get some gas. So we stopped at this gas station. I think it was uh, Walmart, their gas station out front. And Rudy went in to, I think, to pay for it. And he's at the counter. The lady asked a person that was in front of him, said, hey, how you doing? And he said, man, I'm not feeling good. I'm, I'm hurting today. So Rudy, he's got his antenna on. And he's like beelines for that guy after he pays and catches him out there in his car. And I was standing there and I walked over. And Rudy starts leading to the Lord. And this guy, uh, I'm thinking, okay, he had shared he had his foot was hurting him. He had been on a lot of pain in his, uh, I think it was his right foot. And so I'm thinking, okay, I need to pay, pray for that. But the Lord said, you need to just pay for his finances. So Rudy led the Lord, and I was going to pray for his finances. And then all of a sudden the guy goes, oh, oh, I got uh, I feel heat in my foot. Yeah, and he starts getting all excited. We're like, wow, and he got healed right there. What did he pray for? He got healed. So, uh, let me pray for his That was a wild testimony because we, um, we had the manager come out. We had, I mean, there was lines of people lining up for gas. And we literally shut down the gas station. And she was not happy. So we got out of there pretty quick. Nicole. Come on up here. Well, up this way. This is our newest member of Freedom Church. I met her in Tuscaloosa, and she helped us. Because one thing about the Freedom in Action team, we get to travel, too. And so we did some traveling. And so we met Nicole up there. So <laughs> hey everyone, I'm Nicole. Um, 
I'll just do a brief introduction of myself. So, I'm originally from Alabama, but like Rudy mentioned, um, can everybody hear me in the back? Can you hear me okay? Okay, good. So, um, we actually met in Tuscaloosa in an outreach, and um, I followed him on Facebook, and I was like, whoa, look at what the Lord's doing. And he mentioned Tuscaloosa, and I was like, oh, wow, I live in Tuscaloosa. So um, I really wanted to reach out to him and see if I could be a part of it. And um, the Lord said, yes, Nicole, I just want you to serve. So interestingly enough, I had never really done anything like that before um, that looked specifically like an outreach. And um, so I connected with Rudy, and um, it was an incredible weekend. And yeah, yeah, and we, we met a, a lot of great people, and um, I'm just in awe of God that he let me be a part of it, because um, I had been praying and asking the Lord, what should I do? And he just said, love. And I, I feel like we hear that a lot, but um, it it touched my heart in, a, in a, a different way than it had because all of a sudden I became aware that I can't love without Him. I don't know how to love in a healthy way without Him. So I step out in faith and I say, well, I don't really know these, this group, but I'm going to go because I see that the Lord is there. So. I meet up with Rudy and Richard and some other friends of ours, and I feel like um, earlier today I was thinking about what specific story I would share. <laughs> because we had such an incredible weekend, and we saw and met a lot of great people, and they were so hungry and so receptive to um, just the fire that's on Rudy. <laughs> and um, I, I'm just so honored to be a part of it because I learned a lot that weekend, and it stretched me in ways that I hadn't been stretched before. And um, that's what the Lord does, you know. It's good for us to be stretched. But So I say all that because I feel like our favorite story is the army guy, right? Would you agree? Okay, so we um, are going house to house, and I was just blown away at how... Uh, persistent and passionate Rudy was and so I just thought okay I'm gonna follow and, and, and do what they're doing and so we speak to a family but we end up going to a house where it was kind of hard for me to get up the driveway because of all the gravel and I thought well okay Lord you, you have me just out here loving people so whatever I'm able to do I'm here to do and um, Rudy and Richard go up to this man's front door and um, to tell them that we were going to have a cookout the day after and he didn't really want to speak to them so they were getting ready to step up off the porch and so I'm hanging back kind of by the road and this um, this older man and you can just tell he's kind of rough around the edges right and and uh, he, he kind of sees me in the distance, and he goes, hey, 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 honey, hey, honey. And I just said, hey, hey, you know. <laughs> and, um, and so I just knew, you know, that the Lord had something for him because, you know, we laugh and all that, but... People are drawn to the light inside of us. And, and I just want to say up front that if you ever see anything good in me, it's Jesus. It's Jesus. And so, uh, so they, they pushed me up towards the front, and I was thinking about this earlier. Out of all the people that we prayed for that day, I actually, this is the one man that I didn't physically get to touch. We never, I never got to touch him or lay hands on this man. He's the only one. And I was thinking about God's presence and just how we carry that everywhere that we go. And so this man starts talking and talking and talking, right? He's laughing because he knows it's true. But he's just talking and talking. And 
I'm sitting there and I'm, I'm listening to what this man is saying, but I can kind of feel the time pass, you know. And Rudy and um, our friend Richard had kind of stepped back and kind of given this man some room. And there was actually um, a big wasp nest on like the front porch. And so there's, there's all these other things that are very distracting. But in the moment, I'm listening to this man and he's telling us about how he served in the army and, and how he, he's been through a lot of hard things and a lot of trying things. And then he got married and, and he had these children and, and it was just difficult for him and, and all these things. And, and in the natural, it seems like time is dragging on. But I felt this pull inside of me that he's, he's, pulling, he's pulling on the light. Right? He's pulling on the Jesus in me. And so I'm listening, and I immediately start to think, okay, Lord, where's the law? Where's the law that he's believing? Or where is the need? What do you have for him? There's something that you have for him that we're meant to give. So he's talking and talking, and suddenly he starts to just weep and cry and cry and cry and I I was listening and I said okay Lord what is it and he starts to speak about his children and about his wife and I went oh there it is there it is <laughs> so the Lord says talk about how I've softened his heart and he didn't realize it So he starts to cry, and um, I immediately just feel this, this love for him, this compassion for him. So I reach my hand towards him. I, I don't even get to, like, physically touch him because there's a distance between us. And so I just start to pray, and I just start to prophesy over him that the Lord has, has softened his heart, that he's able to love his children in a healthy way, that it might have taken him years. He might have gone through these trials, but the Lord is with him the entire time, and he's becoming aware of it, and, and he's getting these revelations um, of how he's loved and how the Father is always with him. And he is so touched and so um, rocked by this thing that he's scattering to go back into the house, and he comes back. He's like, I have something, I have something. And we're looking at each other like, okay. And so he comes back, and he has this money in his hand, you guys. Pastor Jay Vine got the offer. Yes. Yes. So we take this money back to our friend, Pastor Jay Vine, and we're like, look what God did. And Pastor Jay Vine says, out of all the years that I've been in this neighborhood and we've loved on people and we've ministered and evangelized and done all these things. I've never got an offering before. <laughs> it, was, it was really incredible. And so I say all that to testify about Jesus and just his goodness that, that people, it might seem like God is interrupting your day or your schedule, but truly if we slow down and just Wait. I mean, really, it might look like five or ten minutes in the natural. Seriously. It might seem like a long time, but if you just wait, there's a reason that person is talking to you. And it seems like it's just mundane. But they're pulling on the anointing inside of you. They're pulling on the gifts inside of you that were meant and designed and anointed to pour back into them. Woo! Yeah, that's so good. Who else can I talk to? Still hear me? Brian and Fraga. Come here, Fraga. You want the stage or right here, brother? Fraga helped us with a couple uh, children's outreaches that were off the chain. We were just, you know, that's my heart. And uh, I'm going to cry now, so uh, we'll get together. Right? 
For the pastor, you said right towards Rudy. I know Rudy for many years. 20 years ago, we worked together for a company, putting together merchandise for Walmart. And the associate and the customers used to call us the sellers of God. We stopped what we're doing to reach out to people. We talk about miracles. It happened. A lot of miracles. A lot of people saved. A lot of people restored. And sins it, become healed, you know. But anyway, I'm going to be very briefly. I know time's running, but uh, guys, it's, it's such an honor to work with you, with Tammy, and with her son. It's amazing. And uh, my family is together with my kids. Josiah, my 11 years old, didn't get a chance to work on a mission when we were in Brazil because he was two and a half when he came back. He hasn't been to Brazil since. That was the first ministry that Josiah has been. And he's been changed since. Kicking the ball with you with those little kids. Um, at the, now change the name, is the Oakwood Terrace, is that right? Off of Michigan. Um, one of the testimony about this, um, the first time we went, there's this little, little girl, African American, beautiful, looked like a gymnastic, little, strong, like a horse. <laughs> On the way out, after we pray, after we play, after we reach out to them, give them popsicles, snacks, and just loving on them. This little girl, we were about to say goodbye, she fell like we were about to say goodbye and she's going, look at us with tears. Susan, my wife and my kids, we, we all teared down that day. She said, no, please don't go, don't go. She was poor and crying. Please don't go. Guys, I know there's a lot of missions all over the place. And this church is doing amazing work internationally, national, and inner cities. We saw miracles in Atlanta as we go uh, carried across. As you get out of your comfort zone, I tell the wife, you want to see God operate? He will Come operate on. his way. Yeah. But um, this little place right here on the street, I'm telling you, for those that want to be on the mission internationally and you can't afford whatever, start working here. Right. As you go, he'll make a way for you. Yeah. Pastor. With your permission, I have a letter for the church today. It's a small letter. Would you mind if I can open this letter? Hold the microphone over it, please. Thank you. I've been out of my comfort zone. In your, you know, the Bible's specific tells us that it was a lot of letters sent to, to the church of Corinthians, to the church of Ephesians and many others. The Freedom Church has a, a letter today. And your letter today says, go. Because in Matthew 28 says, go, make a disciples. He didn't say, Fraga, may you go? Can you go, Rudy? Could you go? He didn't put all those other words before the G-O. And by the way, that G-O stands for God's obedience. As you obey the Lord, I encourage you. Church, I have a gift of encouragement. I don't have no names, pastors, evangelists. I don't have no names about that. My gift is to encourage one another. Today you're going to leave this church, of Freedom Church, this Sunday night. Know that one thing, you don't need to be capable. You just need to be available. When you say yes to the goal, he'll make a way for you. One more testimony. I invite somebody else to go with me, a special man of God that comes to this church, Timothy Holland. He's not here. He's probably watching us online. I told, asked permission to mention his name. He said, go ahead, Coach Frank, and I'm doing it. <laughs> I call him and I say, you may go. No, you go. You go with us this week. I am on board. Can I bring Eric with my roommate? Come on, bring four. They went. And you know what he told me this morning? Since that weekend, Rudy, really, since that weekend, his season has changed in his life. The Bible says specifically, and I'm going to shut my mouth. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and everything shall be added to you. Timothy is getting everything, and he's going to need a truck to load up the blessings that come from the Lord. God bless you, and go to the Lord.
Awesome, brother. I think we got one more. I wanted, I wanted a reimagined testimony. And Brian, Brian, come on up here too. Clint, where are you at, brother Clint? Tell that reimagined testimony, because we our our team helps reimagine. We love reimagine. We love the English ships, and our team helps with the prayer. We go hit them. They can't get away. They're in line. <laughs> so. It's just an awesome opportunity for the team, so go ahead. I'll, I'll keep this short. This was uh, last year, reimagine. Uh, about the school, right? We were at the school? Yeah. Anyway, yeah, with the children. Uh, that was a big day. It was the first time I got to go to reimagine event, and it was just amazing to see, like, the outpouring and the ministry. Uh, not only of this church, but every church that was there, man. There were so many people that... I had no clue who they were, and I was like, well, this is, this is wild, you know, but <clears throat> it, was, it, was, it was really powerful as we kept going, and we were just sharing our, I mean, we, I heard a lot of testimony while we were there in line with people. They were um, just standing, waiting in line to get food or just to enter the event, but one particular story was just amazing to me. It was at, toward the end of the event. They were passing out clothing, and uh, under the big shed thing, the big pavilion, and they were packing up clothes and toys for kids. And there were two or three particular children, real small, you know, uh, and they happened to be related. I think they were cousins, maybe sister, brother. Um, and one of the girls was like, Hey, can you help me out? My mom's waiting on me at the gate. And I'm like, Yeah. And then Bobby was with us. Uh, Bobby was helping us, I think, too, and we were all just packing and, you know, loving on them. Uh, and this little girl was like, come on, come on, come on. She's like hustling, you know, like, get, get, hurry up, come on, let's go. And I, I was like, okay, okay. And she's like, follow me, follow me. And she's real adamant, you know. But the Holy Spirit, like, started to deal with me as we were walking. I just started hearing, you know, her mother is, is praying. Her mother is expecting something. I just felt something, you know, in my heart. I was like... All right, we need to go over there. And so we could, we go walking, you know, and she's just like, come on, come on, come on. And people are like, you know, around you saying, hey, what's up? And like, no, I got to follow this little girl because I really felt the anointing. I felt the Lord. And uh, I really felt like just a stirring. And then all of a sudden, you know, her mom is by the gate at the front entrance and people are walking and cars are starting to leave. It's kind of chaotic. It's kind of, you know, you got to really focus in a moment like that. And she, uh, she said, this is my mom. And her mom is, you know, standing there with her friends and other people with her, a lot of women. And they're just talking. And I don't know how the conversation started, but we could just really tell she needed prayer. And I could tell that she was, she, obviously, through the conversation, she didn't know who Jesus was in her heart. She didn't know personally who Jesus is. I could pick up that, you know, we could pick, pick that up. And then we started singing nothing but the blood of Jesus. We started singing hymns, like old hymns, you know, back in the day, old Baptist blood of Jesus hymns. They're still very powerful. And I just was like singing, and I, you know, I was singing out loud like I was on stage or something. I was like, I'd never do this. I mean, it, really. And, yeah, well, I hope, forget what I just said. <laughs> But it was like, it was like powerful. I just felt the Lord on it. And this woman needed Jesus. She wasn't even saved. And we began, she asked me to pray for her. After we sang and, you know, everything was, had happened, you know. And she, she got saved right there. She got saved right there. And she began to weep. She began to just cry, you know. And I was like, man, the angels rejoice when this happens. And it's not something that happens in my life every day. I know that, and most of you know that in your own life. It doesn't happen every day, right? We don't meet a person every day that needs Jesus and they need salvation. But this was just a highlight uh, uh, during that event that really, like, man, it just stirred me up from souls and just it rekindled a fire for souls. And one thing I would say, man, is that we just need to be focused more on souls. I mean, just in just preaching the gospel. I mean, we're not all called to preach behind a microphone. I get it. But we're called to preach the gospel in a sense in our life, whether it be your mom or dad, or sister, brother, or just a witness for Christ. 
you know, everyone in here, you know, I believe you've had an encounter with the Lord. Let's go share what we know and what, we, what we've been given in Jesus' name, man. I love you, brother. Thank you, man. Thank you for being on the team. Uh, Brian. Praise God. I, I remember after that lady got saved, more and more people came. It was like, it was like the, win the windows of heaven just opened. It was amazing. We got that on video, I believe. All right, brother. Brother Rudy, I didn't come up here to give a testimony, but to tell you how much we love you. And the guys, uh, Clint and Bobby and Dennis and my, myself and others, we're, we're by ourselves here. We were loners in the, in the marketplace and we we're about this effective. And when you came, you started plucking us out and asking us, you were inviting us to come in. You put us together on the team. And it's for the first time I experienced what it was like to be with brothers. And the, the power that the Lord sent in our unity. And He called you. And I just want to thank you from the bottom of all our heart for bringing you. And I, I seen you, Rudy, like three years ago as a tree at another place. And you were plucked up. The roots and all. And it was sure, it was painful. It's always painful, but He puts you in His bow. And you went off into the wind. Nobody knew where you were going and where you were going to land. But he was working on you. You were going through the Spirit. He was working on you. And he knew exactly where you were going to land. <laughs> Rudy, that's already the roots are going in. And the, tr the tree, the oak, it's budding and growing. Brother, we love you. Thank you for coming. Thank you for listening. Thank you. Your humility I've personally experienced. I haven't, many of us haven't gone out because maybe some bad experiences. You won't have a bad experience with Rudy because he follows behind Jesus. He doesn't get in front. He's easy. Just like Jesus. Thank you, brother. We love you. I didn't follow that. And I was thinking about when we do these flea market outreach, outreaches, um, I just tell people, they ask me, what, what do I do? And I just said, just be full of God, love Jesus, and love people. And uh, I don't know if the Harvests are here, but they came and the husband was like, Rudy, I'm out of my comfort zone. I said, just love people. And they brought their their daughter to literally read the word she brought her bible to read to everybody that walked by at the flea market it so touched my heart and people who's going to turn that down you know a little girl with the bible we read the bible with me you know what a tool i, I, I know that wouldn't work for me but it would work for a little girl so it's great for children so anyway Praise God. Just wanted to do that. Just pray. Father, I just thank you for this body, this tribe, freedom, like that arrow that Brian was talking about. I see people after tonight being shot out that today is your day, that you're going to make a decision. The enemy's kept you dormant. It's tried to keep you dormant for a long time. And it's your day. Today is your day. In Jesus' name. Amen. I feel like Reinhard Bonnke. I feel like just... I feel like that. I'm telling you. We're going to see what happens here. Um, I want to share a story with you, and we'll see where it goes, but I had a dream that went along with a video. I, I don't think I'm going to have time to share that, maybe next time when I speak. But I want to share this dream that I had with you several months ago, and I'm kind of like reliving it right now. 
the Lord had taken me to a very rich school, and I know it was significant of the church. It took me to this very rich school, and I could feel that I was very comfortable there, and he showed me a very rich girl there. I was like, oh, wow, this is great. And I could tell in the dream that I, I, I just enjoyed it. The significant of us, we, 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 get, we get born again and we experience, you know, just being in church and especially in the United States. I have to say United States now because I was in Central America. I can't say America anymore because it's all America. But, but I was in this rich church, a rich school, and then he shifted me to a very poor school. And a very poor girl was there. And he told me, he says, I'm giving you a choice. Do you want to stay in the comfortable rich school? Or do you want to go out there and reach this girl? And I woke up and I heard, go reach my bride. It's the title of the sermon right here. And so I've got a couple of parables that I want to read to you. I'm not going to read them all. But I want to read something to you in Luke 14. You can write down the Luke 14, 15 through 24, and I'll probably stop halfway through it because the parable I read for point two is very similar. And I want to hit both of them. And it said, Now when one of those who sat at the table with him heard these things, he said to him, Blessed is he who shall eat bread in the kingdom of God. Then he said to him, A certain man gave a great supper and invited many and sent his servant at supper time to say to those who were invited, Come for all things are now ready. But they all with one accord became, began to make excuses. The first said to him, I bought a piece of ground and I must go and see it. I ask you to have me excused. And another said, I bought five oxen. I'm going to test them. I ask you to have me excused. See a theme there? We have so many excuses. The enemy will talk you out of your calling and give you all kinds of excuses. We get so comfortable. Believe me, for eight, nine years, I was so comfortable just doing the stuff. Pastor Arnie had talked about this morning. The American dream and all this distraction that we have. When there's people out there every second as we sit in here going into eternity right now. And it grips me. I, I really pray that you would get the reality of that today. That there's people every single second right now going into eternity. But yet we party on. I'm not saying we don't do that. I said we get filled up and go. We get so filled up. You know what? The Bible says our cup runs over. Come on. Right? Why do we waste it? Sometimes I do that. I'll, you know, God will show me something and I'll, I'll just brush it off because I'm distracted from the things of this world. So we make excuses, guys. We become too comfortable with our Christian life here in the United States. I remember a testimony that really, really broke my heart. A pastor told me that a lady came from the uh, underground church and came to the pastor and told him she, 
She said, you know, we're not praying for the, Amer the United States church to be blessed. He was like, what? What do you mean? He says, you guys are too, she said, you guys are too distracted. She said, we're praying for persecution for the United States church. And I was like, I don't know whether that's right or wrong. <laughs> but they, they get it. You know, the underground church in China, get it. They're being persecuted every single day. And the church goes on and growth happens. The gospel's preached. And we sit here in church and party on. You know, Reinhard Bonnke released a video called The Lost Sea. And he said, church isn't a pleasure boat. It's a lifeboat. Right? We need to get over the sun. I heard it Friday night, the Sunday and Wednesday thing. We need to be Christians all week long. Come on. You know? So filled up with God that when somebody tells you that they've got a hurt foot, we're not so distracted and stop and pray for them. Because that happened to me today, or a couple days ago. I was so distracted, I walked away and didn't pray for this man, and the Lord told me. He corrected me. Thank God for my wife that encouraged me. She said, pray for another opportunity. You know? God is merciful. And the Lord gave me another opportunity, not with him, him but I was out on the beach preaching, because I do some live stuff. I'm preaching, and this guy comes up to me, and he thought I was a weirdo. He said, are, are you okay? And I'm like, yes, sir. He's got three dogs. And he's got a bulldog that's wanting to eat me, brother. And uh, his tongue's like ripped out, this bulldog, because people were fighting him. And so I had a chance to minister. He said, for, I, I told him, he asked me if I was on drugs. and I said, well, I kind of am, but with the Holy Ghost. I love Jesus. You know, what an opportunity. You know, God will give us as we sow in water. Dr. Jim heard that one. God will send you an easy one just to encourage you. I may talk about that testimony another time, but okay, I'll share it. <laughs> I was at the I went to this evangelism school in January, and I'm sitting, I went to this Indian restaurant. Feeling, this is where the Lord will lead you guys. Sometimes you need to pray where, where to eat. Dr. Jim, be led. So I, I felt a craving for Indian food, but they didn't have meat, so I wanted meat. So I pulled in, and this, first, this, this restaurant didn't have meat, so I said, okay, I'll go to this other one. So I went to this other one. They didn't have meat as well. So I'm sitting in there, and, the, and so I told the, the, the waitress to just give me something, you know, just whatever you recommend. And the guy sits, comes in, sits down right in front of me, and looks at me and says, I'll have what he's eating. And inters, interviews me for an hour. We got to eat together. He inter, interviewed me. By the time we were done eating, he was giving his life to Jesus. So, you guys, you keep plowing, keep loving people, God will throw an easy one in there. I like that. That's a good point, right? It wasn't in my sermon tonight. So, you can pull up, is he pulling up scriptures? Yeah. Matthew 22. <laughs> I believe it's 1 through 14. This is the second parable that I want to share with you guys tonight, and it really goes in line with what Pastor Arnie talked about this morning. That's why this morning was like, wow. I was like, man. So I want to read this to you. And Jesus answered and spoke to them again by parables and said, The kingdom of heaven is like a certain king who arranged a marriage for his son. And sent out his servants to call those who were invited to the wedding. 
and they were not willing to come. Again he sent out his servants, saying, Tell those who are invited, See, I have prepared my dinner, my oxen, fatted cattle are killed, and all things are ready, come to the wedding. But they made light of it and went their ways, one to his farm, another to his business. And the rest seized his servants, treating them spitefully, and killed them. But when the king heard about it, he was furious, and he sent out his armies, destroyed murderers, and burned up their city. And then he said to his servants, the wedding is ready, but those who were invited were not worthy. Therefore, go into the highways, and as many as you find, invite to the wedding. So the servants went out to the highways and gathered together all whom they found both bad and good, and the wedding hall was filled with guests. Now I'm getting to the good part. But when the king came in to see the guests, he saw a man there who did not have on a wedding garment. So he said to them, to him, friend, how do you come in here without a wedding garment? And he was speechless. Then the king said to the servants, bind him hand and foot, take him away and cast him into utter darkness. There will be weeping and gnashing of teeth, for many are called, few are chosen. The wedding garment, guys, we can't get in without it. The Lord told me that's the blood of Jesus. There's a lot of people out there who don't have the wedding garment on. But you know what else he showed me? In the midst of Of the tribes there's also people with the wedding garment not on there's people lost in the midst of the congregation as well this person was in the wedding party he had no wedding garment on and they cast him out that should shake us a little bit I know it shakes me and the Lord told me recently, I was at a, uh, I was in Costa Rica. And I, they were taking me from home to home. And, and so I was, I was teaching people how to lay hands on the sick. And, and so I prayed for this guy and the Lord healed his back immediately. And then <coughs> this lady needed her knee healed. So I said, brother, if you just got healed, put your hand on this person and, and pray for him. I'm going to tell you what to say. You're going to pray. And, and, and the pastor whispers in my ear, and he goes, he's not saved. He doesn't know the Lord. The wedding, he didn't have the wedding garment on. And I said, well, let's get him saved. It's just as easy as that. I preached the gospel to him, and I said, okay, now you're ready. Pray for this person, and she gets healed. So how long do you have to be saved to pray for the sick? Within a couple seconds, right? Because it didn't take that long. But I'm telling you, there's people inside. The Bible says there's ruin in the midst of the congregation. There's people out there that you can love, even in our congregations when they come in and out, that you can help lead them to Jesus in and out of the congregation. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Revelation 19, 1 through 10. I love this one. So I'm talking about the marriage supper of the Lamb. Feeling the Holy Spirit right now, guys. And I heard, it's Revelation 19, 6. Pull that one up for me. And I heard, as it were, the voice of a great multitude, as the sound of many waters, and as the sound of mighty thunderings. Hallelujah, Lord God, omnipotent reigns. Let us be glad and rejoice and give him glory, for the marriage supper of the Lamb has come, and his wife has made herself ready. And to her it was granted to be arrayed in fine linen, clean and bright. 
For the fine linen is the righteous acts of the saints. It's going to be glorious. Every one of us are all going to be in the same place. The only thing I can think about, I can't even grasp, you know, it's talking about the roarings and the thunders, the thunderings and the sound. Can you imagine how many people that are probably going to be at the marriage supper of the Lamb? I got a little glimpse of it, just a little glimpse. I was in the Brownsville Revival. And every time we would come in, I don't know if anybody's ever been there during the revival times. Come on, on, brother. And at the beginning, brother, it was like Lendl would get on that keyboard and it was like a shout. Thousands of people all together shouting to Jesus. And then some some people probably went to the send. There was about 60,000 people there. That's just a glimpse of where we're all going to be in one spot. Every tribe, every tongue, every color. But he's calling us to go get him. He's calling all of us. We don't all get, we don't get a, I'm not to this special evangelist. He's called, I may be called to uh help train people in the office of an evangelist, but none of us get away from it. We're all called to go wherever you're at. You know, you don't have to come out on an outreach with me to, hey, Judy, praise God, I'm glad you're here. Praise the Lord. She's been praying for our city for many, many years. I'm glad you're here, Judy. God bless you. I'm going to share some things from you. So, I want to pull up Hebrews 12, 1 through 2. And I want to read this to you guys because there's some folks waiting for us. There's some folks in heaven cheering us on. They're waiting for that glorious day. When we all come back, all come together. But he all saved us. He saved us for a purpose. Just like the word says, go into all world. Just like my friend. It's awesome. Braga. Go. He didn't say no. He said go, brother. And so, you know, the Lord told me one time at a Spanish church, my buddy Fabian He's preaching in a Spanish church in this city. He's been here a few times. And he told me, he says, you don't have to go to the nations to reach the nations. They're here. Right? Pensacola, our first city. We can start here and watch and see what the Lord might do. He might, you know, you start doing some little things that the Lord's showing you to do. And then boom, boom, boom. All kinds of doors open for you. So anyway, I want to read this. Therefore, we also, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which so easily ensnares us. And let us run with endurance the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and has sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. The cloud of witnesses. I was in my car one time. And I like to ask the Lord what's on his heart. And, and the Lord asked me what I see. And I literally saw people just surrounding me, just clapping. (laughs) Immediately that scripture came to my heart. They're cheering a song, guys. 
They've run their race. They're in heaven, but they're cheering us on now to go and do it. To go and love people. I want to share something with you that my friend Judy, I want to read. We'll give a call. Where are we at? Eight o'clock. Okay, good, great. I want to share this with you guys, and then I'm going to give a call. Because I know the Lord's speaking to people tonight. Is he speaking to me? I can do more. Thank God my friend Judy's here. She sent this to me. I'm not going to read it all. I could probably share it with you from my heart. She had an encounter with the Lord. And the first thing that happened to her, she was standing at a door and the Lord told her that she had to strip off her filthy rags before she could go in. There was the garment past her, the blood. But she saw something behind her. There was a bunch of people that was behind her. And she asked the angel before she could go in, she said, aren't these people going in with me? Aren't they coming in? And then, of course, she got to go through the door and got to see some family members, which was pretty neat. And then she was at the marriage supper of the Lamb, sitting at a table by herself, wondering why she was sitting at this table by herself. And so she asked the angel, why, why am I at the table? By myself. Why am I at the marriage supper of the Lamb? By myself. And the angel said to her, You know those people that are waiting to get in? They were assigned to you. You should go break them. Here. So I want to tell you that every single one of us has people assigned to us by the Holy Spirit and by Jesus to bring to the marriage supper of the Lamb. That encounter shook me, Judy. And I'm doing some, but I know I can do more. There's people out in Pensacola that need Jesus. Amen. Come on. So tonight I, I want to give you all a call. The Lord's speaking to you tonight, and he's really touching your heart. I want you to raise your hand. You feel like you need to repent. Awesome. All right, y'all raising your hands, stand up. Praise God. Awesome. Come on down. Y'all come on up and sing. Brother, can y'all can you sing about the blood? like you did this morning. It was amazing. And so the Lord's given a call today. The Lord's speaking to your heart. Come on down here. I know you're up. This is how the Lord's been showing me to do altar calls now. You know what's happening right now in the body of Christ? There's... There's a, a washing going on. The Lord is washing his body again. He's taking off those filthy rags, Judy, that you talked about in your dream. He's washing the church. He's getting rid of selfishness because all sin is rooted in selfishness. And the Lord is saying, just lay it down. Lay down your selfishness. Lay down your pride. And take up what I've given you. And it's just between you and Jesus. It's not even between. It's the Father loves you. Thank God for his mercy. Just like the Lord gave me another opportunity. I'm believing to, re to meet that guy that I didn't pray for his foot. 
I'm going to go work out and look for them. So just tell Jesus, I'm sorry. Wash me in your blood. Just, I repent today. And I give you my life today. 100%. I make you Savior and Lord. That's it. That's just the Lord is just, just as easy as that. Turning around. Turn it to Him. He loves you. 